Hello my friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and in this tutorial um, we are going to make these absolutely adorable little slippers. But before we do so, I have a huge favor. Would you please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel? Hit the like button every time you watch my video. If you don't like it, then don't bother. But, <laughs> but I'm confident that you're liking my video. So please hit that like button and subscribe because um, that helps YouTube see that my channel is being watched and it will it will spread it to a wider audience. Now 66% of you who watch my videos regularly do not hit that subscribe button. I need you to do that. Would you do that for me please? It's it's free. It doesn't uh, uh doesn't send you a bunch of emails and notifications and and stuff like that. It just helps me out. It helps Facebook recognize my my channel. So please go ahead and do that. In this video, we are going to use our Centro 40 needle machine, but you can use your Addy 46 needle machine. I would just say um, that when, when you're done, maybe roll over the edge a little bit and sew it down just so it's not quite so wide and you can make that work. Okay. Um, I used four weight yarn in pink. Now I also can't tell you what brand it was choose your favorite yarn because in this tutorial I um, I will tell you how to make the right measurements according to what I think would work and it doesn't matter what weight you use for for um, for your yarn because it's all on measurements okay so grab your machine grab your yarn of choice and let's get started Oh, and one more quick little thing. Sorry, friends. Um, please watch to the end because I am one who is a stickler with attention to details. And we have made the heel on this um, shaped beautifully. It's a rounded heel. So you're going to want to do that. And I also place my pom-pom strategically. So watch to the end and uh, be sure to, to follow those um, little particulars. Okay, friends. All right, so I have my 40 needle central set up. And I'm going to bring my last white. And my first black. Now, if I look at these little numbers, now who can even see them? I don't know what those numbers are on here. Um, let me just see here. I literally can't see them. But I like to make the black, <laughs> the black um, needle here my first needle. So I always just take my permanent black marker and I mark that divider in between the last white and the first black. And then I'm always knowing when it's coming around. Okay. So we're going to take a contrasting color of yarn to our working yarn. Um, now red and pink are going to clash hugely, <laughs> but it helps me to see the stitches later that I need to see. So I grabbed red. So we're going to go behind that first black needle in front of the next white, behind and in front, all the way around, casting on just like this with our waist yarn. Okay, just like so. All the way around. And in front of that last white one into the yarn feeder, just like that. I'm going to put it into the largest tensioner hole, and then I'm going to knit, I just usually do seven rows. That's one, this is two, three, I'll do seven and I'll see you back. All right, so I'm on my seventh row. I'm watching for that black divider to come around because I, I take a black permanent marker and I color that divider that's between the last white and first black. So I always know when the end of my row is coming around and I don't pass it. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut my yarn end. I'm gonna put it in between that last white and the first black. Gotta tighten my clamps. I use my Addy clamps to um, hold down my center machine. And if you um, wanna, if you have an Addy and a Centro and you wanna know how I do it, just look for my video. It's way, way down below in the videos, um, because not below this video, but when you click on my channel and go to videos, um, it was done a long time ago, so you'll have to search for it, but it's there. And I'll show you how I attach my Addy clamps to my Centro. So now I'm gonna take my working yarn and I'm going to put it into that yarn feeder, into that large tensioner, and then I'm gonna have it between the last white and the first black. I'm gonna hold both of those um, yarn tails and I'm gonna knit four needles, three or four needles, okay? Then I'm gonna take the two yarn ends of my working yarn, and I'm going to pull them. And the reason being is you can see that this um, stitch right here is going to be looser than the rest. So I always tighten it up. I pop that down underneath the divider and I just give it a little tug to tighten it up so that my stitches at the beginning of my row are, are nice tension, okay? And then we're going to knit. I'm going to just go slowly for this first one to make sure that they catch on to that waist yarn. Just like that, that's row one, and I have to count manually. 
um, because I don't have a nail counter on this one. This is two, and I use, I actually will use my um, Susan Bates row counter, which I will find in a jiffy <laughs> really soon. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna keep knitting. I'm, for me, I'm gonna do 32 rows. So this is two, let me do five, three, and then I'll explain to you. Four, I'm gonna do five so that I don't lose my count. <laughs> And one more, and five. Okay, I see that black divider coming around. I know that's the end of my row. So I've done five rows now, and what you're going to do is you're gonna measure the bottom of your child's foot, okay? And um, I measured, this is for uh, a little girl whose foot is five inches long, or pardon me, hers was six inches long. Okay, so I measured the bottom of her foot. I had her step on this. So from the tip of her big toe to the heel, um, back of her foot was six inches. Okay, she's three years old. Um, and so I am going to knit this till it's half an inch shorter because there's gonna be some stretch. So I'm gonna knit it till this is five and a half inches long unstretched. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep knitting. And when it's five and a half inches long, it's unstretched. Now I've already done one, so I know that that comes to 32 rows because I want my second one to be exactly the same. You, you got to measure it on your first one and then remember your row count because then you'll do that same amount for the next one. But I'm going to keep going and when I get to 32 rows, I will show you um, again what I've done, okay? So keep going, friends. I'm going to go off camera because I'll lose count otherwise. So this is six. <laughs> All right, so this is my 32 rows. I already cut this here. Let me put this back in there so I don't confuse you. And you're gonna take your tape measure and you're going to measure, okay? So I'm not gonna stretch it. I'm just gonna loosely hold it up. I'm gonna put that on my first row, measure it up. It's five and a half inches, that's what I wanted. Her foot measured six inches, so I'm doing it a half inch um, shorter so that there, because there's some stretch in it, okay? So um, I'm doing five and a half inches for a six inch foot. For a seven inch foot, you'd probably do six and a half inches. Um, I've not done a slipper, a slipper for every size of foot that there is, so I can only tell you what's working for this size. Um, and uh, you can measure your child's foot and, and do it accordingly. But I think if you do a half an inch, less than what their foot is when it stretches it'll be the right length that's just that's how i calculate it okay so you're going to cut off your working yarn you're going to put it into the center of your machine cut off a, a good length tail because you're going to need it for sewing in between the last white the first black and you're going to go ahead and you're going to grab your waist yarn again put it into your machine in between the last white the first black and you're going to knit as many rows as you're comfortable knitting for waist yarn i'm going to do seven okay Going slow the first one because I want to make sure every stitch catches that yarn without tucking. See that first one's going to tuck there so I'm going to, even though it's already knit, but it's going to tuck. There we go. I'm going to catch it. It's worth taking your time. Now if it tucked it really doesn't matter, okay? Because this is waist yarn. But we still want it to, we still want to do a nice job so, so it doesn't unravel. And we're going to do seven rows. So go ahead, knit your desired amount of waist yarn rows, and I'll see you back. All right, so I completed my rows of waist yarn. I'm going to cut off that yarn end. I'm swimming in yarn all over me here. And I'm going to put that tail between the last white and the first black. And we're going to go around twice. And on the second time, it will let go of your work. See how beautiful that is? Yay! Okay. All right, we have that released, and we're going to remove our centro, and we're going to continue on. All right, so we have it off the machine. It's not looking really great there. It's looking great, but it's not looking beautiful. I'll show you. We have to stretch this lengthwise. Oh, see how those stitches just come together? This is my favorite part. Okay, widthwise and lengthwise. And it softens up our fabric, puts those rows in line, and just it's ready to go. So let's now find yourself two stitch markers. For me, I use bobby pins. And we are going to, I'm going to see which end this is. Okay, so this is the end where we took off the end of our project, okay? We are going to, doesn't matter which side you do first, but if you're new at this and you need to learn how to where to put your bobby pins or your stitch markers, then go to the to the end and you'll know it's the end if it unravels really easily like that okay 
the beginning, it's a little bit harder to take off, but it's not hard. It's, we'll, we'll do it. So now you take your waist yarn, and this is why we need a contrasting color, because you can see those stitches so easily, okay? On the last slipper, I did white, and boy, <laughs> that's when I thought, what did you do? Okay, and so I am going to look where that tail is, and where it's coming out of that stitch is a, my first stitch marker. Make sure that tail is on the outside of my work. Then you go to the left of that, and you'll see where your long tail is here. When you pull on this top loop here, it's attached to this, to, the, to your working yarn tail. That's the stitch you want. That's stitch 40. Make sure that tail is outside. Now we need to find the very center over here. So if we have 40 stitches, that means we're going to count around till we get to 20 and 21. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Those are the two very side stitches. I'm going to grab my crochet hook. I'm going to put it underneath 21. Count that as one. Go underneath 20. Count that as two. Pull it through that loop on the hook. Go down to the bottom here. Three, up to the top, four, down to the bottom, five, we're catching all these stitches. This is six. Now I count because if you miss one, your row will unravel, okay? So this is seven, eight, nine, doesn't matter if you pick it up from the top and grab it like that or go underneath like this. Either way, you just got to get it through the loop on the, on the hook, okay? And you're going to work it all the way down, making sure you count. Now, of course, I've lost count because I was talking to you, but that's okay. I can see my stitches really clearly, and I've done this a bazillion times. But if you're new at this, make sure you count every stitches, stitch till you get to the end. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to show you how it should be, what your stitch marker count should be. Um, and if it's off, then you know you've done it wrong and you've missed a row. Okay, so I'm going to just get there. Making sure your tails are outside of this one here and this one here. And I'm also going to show you why it's important to use stitch markers. So I know I have two left. Those are my stitch markers. So we have 40 stitches. So this is always going to be 39. This will always be 40. You always end on the one that's at the top here if you've done it the right way. So this is 39. Sometimes it can get tight so that bobby pins help because you just pull it up. And then you just pull it out. So that's 39. Go across to 40, pull it up, get your hook under there, pull it out. You've worked all 40 stitches. You're not going to drop any rows. Yarn over that tail, pull it through the loop on your hook. Then for this one, all you have to do is unravel it like this and pull it off. Now, a little trick for you that uh, we learned from one of our members in my Koala Knits and Knacks Facebook group. Thanks again, Tina. Take your tail and go ahead and put it on your yarn needle, then go through the center there, through the through the end, and out the work until you get just a little loop. Make sure you have a little loop because you need to be able to find that later, okay? Then when you pull, pull your waist yarn off, let me just wrap this around. I like to roll it up as I'm going. It doesn't get tangled all around your yarn end. Like, isn't that brilliant? Such a simple, simple solution. Now, this is why it's so important to be in a group because in a Facebook group um, like Koala Knits and Knacks because we have some brilliant people over there who give us and we we share ideas and you know it's become a really really great great group of friends so come on over and join it you'll see the link down below okay and you'll see what happened there is that I just put my stitch through the through the yarn there so that that's why it's not coming out but now you can just pull this tail out pull it un unleash that <laughs> and then you can roll up your waist yarn and it's done. Let's move on to the other side. All right, so that's what it looks like. Perfect. Now we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to find our stitches. A little different on this side, okay? So now you've got your, you've got your waist yarn coming out the top here. So you're gonna follow that down and it's coming through this loop here. You're gonna put your first stitch marker in that loop. Then you're gonna to go to the left of it and you're gonna see there's Looks like there's one stitch on top of the other, two right there, okay? Where you see your working yarn, this one, it's right beside this stitch. That's the one you want. That's your last stitch. That's stitch 40. So now you're going to count around until you get to 20 and 21 again. You're going to put your hook under 21, then pick up 20, count back and forth until you get to 39 and 40. 
yarn over, pull it through just like we did with the other side, and then I'll show you how to remove this waste yarn if you're not sure how to do it. Okay, so go ahead, do that, and I'll see you back. All right, all done. So now this one's a little bit different. We're going to roll up the rim, <laughs> I say, roll up the, the top till you get to the very top row. And you know it's a top row when you can take that yarn and you see that it's fed through that last loop, okay? And then you're gonna pinch the stitch, and I'm about 10 rows in, 10 stitches in, okay? And pull, roll up, pinch the stitch, and pull. Making sure it's that very top row. Okay, now there are other ways to do this. You can put um, a PC, when you're, when you're adding your waist yarn, there's different ways to do this. So you can just uh, pull it all off in one piece, but I prefer this way. I don't find it any, it takes any more time and I find it is easy to do and I just get her done, okay? So this is my preferred method of removing waist yarn, okay? So I'm gonna pinch that last stitch, pull it out. This one's not long enough that I have to worry about putting it in there. So I'm just gonna, pull this off. I generally wind it up into a ball as I do it, but for the sake of the camera, I'm just going to pull it off. Just like that. Okay, and we've got another beautiful end. Look at that little cutie. It's such a cute little piece. Okay, so now what we're going to do, and, and again, I'm going to just, I'm going to hide this one and attach a longer one because I need a longer one for sewing. Um, and not much longer, but just a little bit. And then let's begin sewing. So grab yourself a nice needle that you use. This is a wool needle. Um, thanks again, Francois, for sending me so many packages of them. Um, I was having a hard time finding them, and one, one of the members of my group sent them to me from France. Three packs of these in different sizes. I just was so thrilled. So, so, so pleased about that. It was such a sweet thing for her to do. Okay, so grab your needle, and let's move on. All right, so here's our little beautiful piece. So cute. Um, I have attached another yarn end, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our slipper right in half, just like that, just lengthwise in half, and we are going to begin sewing. So all I do is I take up the very top row. You don't wanna go deep because you don't want a wide seam, okay? You just wanna pick up the very top row and go back and forth like this, okay? Picking up stitches. I don't go over like this because it just adds to the bulk. I just go back and forth. Just like so. Now shout out to all of you parents who have little children. I have my little three-year-old here with me um, for four days this week. She's up with her papa right now so that I can do this. Um, and she is like an angel. Of, like really, she's a very good girl. But even still, it takes like, it takes a lot of, of work. And it's tiring and you can't get to your knitting as easily. I wouldn't trade it for a second because I love the time I get to spend with her. But for all of you young parents out there with little kids at home um, who still love to craft and do all these special little projects, um, a hand clap to you. You got this, you got this guys. And and you, you um, are doing a great job. So anyways, uh, congratulations on being a parent of young children. If you are one, Say so in the comments below. We'd love to uh, cheer you on. Okay, so now that we have that sewn up, we're going to make our heel. We don't want a pointy heel like that in our slipper. Who wants that, okay? So we're going to take that end and we're gonna tip that up, just like that. Just very little, you don't have to measure it, just tip it up. Then you're gonna sew that down to the seam, just like that, very, very simply. Just to the seam, grab that point again and sew it down. You see what I've done? Okay, and now you're just going to sew down the side very simply, just to sew that little triangle into place. Very, I'm off the camera. Oh no, I hope I'm not off the camera. Very easily done, just like this. Tie a little knot, tie a little knot. Then go underneath between those layers over to the other side. And we're going to do the same, but before we start, we're going to tie a little knot, just one little one. And that's because then when we're, when we're pulling up here, it's not going to pull it here, okay? And then we're going to just go up. You don't want any bulk on their little feet, so you're just doing it very, very basic, very, through very few layers here, okay? And then now we're going to tie this off into a knot. I 
I only do one because I don't want to bulk there for their little feet. And then I'm going to just hide it up that seam one way, come down the other way. And then do a little bit more the other way because I only tied one knot, then I know this is not going to come undone. Okay, then I'm going to cut that off. And we've got a little formed heel. Look how round that is. This is the wrong side, okay? We're working on the wrong side. But look, see the difference that makes? A simple little technique, and you're going to have a, a much nicer looking, um, looking project, okay? Now, this is the same as my Grandma Mary's Vintage Slippers for Adults. The same thing that I do there. You can check that out if you want to make yourself a pair for adult, okay? But now what we're going to do is we're going to take this other end, and we're going to go just along the top of that seam there. I don't want to go along the side or this inside here because I don't want bulk. I'm going to go up into the top. You don't have to even fold it over because we're gathering this. Up into the top, go down, up. Just picking up a very little bit. Okay? Don't grab lots. You don't want a thick toe. Okay? Just like this. And again, you can make this on your central, or pardon me, your, your Addy 46. I think the Centro 48 might be a bit too wide. You'd have to try. But um, putting this on my little three-year-old's feet, her name is Rome, by the way. Um, I think if it was wider with the 46, it would be fine too. And, and you've seen the picture in the beginning. So I think you could actually do this with, uh, you can do a three-year-old slipper with a bigger machine. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull that making sure that we smooth it out as we do so. Okay, just like that. Don't pull so tight that you break it because we're going to go around one more time. You're going to attach it to the end. Just like that. And then we're going to just pick up again, just a very little bit through the top. When I say little bit, I just mean you don't want to have thick layers because you don't want to have anything hurting their little sweet little toes, okay? And then we're going to just pick up a couple stitches here and there just to reinforce this, just like so, okay? That one might be in a little too thick, but we'll see here. Get it around till you get to the top. Again, this is the inside, okay? And then join those two just like that with one little knot. From there, we're going to, we've got a little boat, <laughs> but isn't that cute? You can see where it's going. We're going to smooth out the top here so that we have our top row and I always have it so the wide part of the V is facing to the left. The point is at the right on both sides. It's easier to do the mattress stitch that way. So just smooth it out and find that row that you're happy with. Just like so, and then we're going to mattress stitch. So we're going to go in, and it's, well, I can get in there, I guess. Right in there, pick up two bars. Over to the other side, pick up two bars. This is where I came out. I'm going to go into that same stitch, pick up two bars. This is where I came out. I'm going to go into that stitch, pick up two bars. I'm going to do that um, up as far as I need to go, and I'll measure it for you because you might not have your little person with you, um, but I... I did, did a few stitches like this, then I put it on her little foot to see how high up I wanted to do it, okay? And once you get so far, you just pinch the end and pull that, and it closes it. And for this little one, the best thing for me to do is to measure the, from, because I have the pom-pom on, I'm going to measure from the end here to where the where I've done here. So it's three, just, yeah, well, it's three and a half. Because my point, let me just close that off. My point is right here. So it's three and a half. And that's what I want to do. Or you could even count the stitches here and see how many are on each row. But I'm going to just go three and a half on this side. That's about there. I'm going to pinch that right there. And that's how far I'm going to go. Okay. To about there. So I'm going to finish my mattress stitch. And again, if you have your little person with you, you can um, try it on their foot and see how far up you want to go. 
And because I had to fix my needle, I've dropped it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure it again with my other one, making sure I've got them the same. And then I'll see you right back, friends. Okay, that's the same. When I hold them beside each other, they're both where they should be, okay? This one needs to do one more stitch, and I'm going to do that. They're almost the same, I should say. It would be close enough, but I'm particular, so I'm going to do just pick up one here and one there. I'm going to pull that to make sure that it's tight, okay? And then we're going to just give a little knot, remembering one more time that this is the inside of our slipper. This is the wrong side, okay? Tie off a knot, just like that. Go ahead and hide your yarn end. Cut it off and there's your little slipper. Now you're gonna turn it the other way because when you put your pom-pom on, you wanna be sure that you put it on the right side because our little heel um, where we sew it is on the inside, but look how beautiful that heel is, okay? So there we go. We have a beautiful, beautiful little slipper. Now, I used this pom-pom maker. It's got a 45 on the back. Um, it's a clover pom-pom maker. I have a set of four. This is the second smallest. So it's the second one in the size, ranging from small to large. Okay, um, and this is the one I'm going to use, and I'm going to do a double strand. I'm going to use pink and purple, because those are her two favorite colors, <laughs> and I'm going to make a pom-pom. I'm not going to do that on this video because I do have a video that shows you how to use the clover pom-pom maker. It's one of my most um, popular videos on my channel so make sure you look that up and follow how I've, how, how I've done it or make your pom-pom however you like to do it and I'm going to show you how I place it because believe it or not there is um, a technique to that too depending on the size of pom-pom that you use. So stick with me friends. Come back when your pom-poms are done. All right so once you have your pom-pom all beautifully shaped and done you're going to take your yarn ends. I like to have them even so that it's easier to work with. You're going to put two of those ends. I use a double strand so I, you might just have a single strand here but if that's what if that's the case then you just put one of them on. Okay now this is the right side of my slipper. If I was to just attach it right up here it just goes too far up their foot. So you have to depending on the size of your pom-pom put it on your shoe on the slipper and measure it so that this part is even with where it goes where, you, where your um, corner is there, okay? Don't have it up at the corner here because it just it just is not a right fit. And I'm all about, about um, attention to detail. So that's why I, I tell you these little things, okay? Um, just like that heel was a little bit of attention to detail. You can you can make slippers and, and have a pointy end if you like there, but it's not as nice, <laughs> okay? So let's put this on and I can see that I've got to go down about there. So the normal thing is to put it here, but we're going to go down farther. Okay, just there. And I'm going to put it in and then I'm going to take this other side. And I'm going to go across and put it in just like so. So then I'm going to, I don't need to do this next part on, but I'm going to tie it. I can even go a little bit farther. See how that's now over? And you don't, you don't have to be quite that particular, but I am going to go a little bit, just a tiny, tiny wee bit farther down. Um, just because I do like the edge of the pom-pom to sit just near the seam here. So I'm going to go down to about there. And the same on this side. Then you're going to tie a knot on the inside and you're going to hide your ends. And then you're going to find your little sweetheart and you're going to let them wear them and they're going to just be so happy. Okay. There we go. I like that much better. Okay. So I'm going to just turn this inside out like that. Grab these two strands. I hear little feet coming down the stairs. I got to get this done. Okay, I'm going to tie a knot, then I'm going to put it on my needle and I'm going to hide it through this in between and then we'll be done. All right, so when you have that done, we've got the sweetest little pair of slippers. Aren't they just adorable? Thanks again for joining me. I sure appreciate spending time with you. Um, and again, please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're loving my videos and, and my channel and you're, and you're benefiting from it, there is a PayPal option. I present my, pat my patterns to you for absolutely free and I have a hard time even mentioning this, but it does help with the cost of things. So if you um, are so inclined and want to donate to my channel to help me grow it, then that would be awesome. And if not, then I love you just as much. So anyways, take care, my friends. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.